So we will head on to the next panel. And um, Hendrik also mentioned the text of, of Anna Kleiman from Israel, which was published in the last book. And Anna will start uh, the new panel. The title is All Eyes on Us, Provocativeness in the Israeli Slut Walk Movement and its Presumption on Social Media. So Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. I really am happy to be here once again, and I'm happy to draw on the last argument about how visuals matter. And I want to talk about this, my study, which is my um, basically MA thesis. And I'm going to talk about one aspect of it because it's quite long, uh, and in the article will be a bit more elaborated. So uh, the slot walk movement, uh, a bit intro, started at 2011 in Canada after a cop went to a law school in Toronto and uh, said basically that in order for women not to be victimized, they have to dress or look like women who are not sluts. Be, be careful of being perceived as sluts. This little comment um, created outrage throughout the world and that year uh, in Canada and across the, across Europe and North and South Africa, Asia and the Middle East, uh, slot walks were organized locally. And it's a very um, unique protest because it has a lot of emphasis on the visuals uh, and that's what I'm going into. Uh, but first I want to cite I want to cite uh, a scholar named Annie Hill that talked about a little bit uh, about the slot walk and basically researched um, something that she coined rape logic and I'm gonna uh, read it here. So she says, quote, citing a woman, a woman's unspoken yet visible consent locates responsibility for sex on her body in her choice of clothes and in her desire to appear as an object of desire for men. A man's account on how a woman appears is granted authority while a woman's clothes can speak for her. She goes on in that article to argue that these are two, there are two subjects basically uh, in a woman. It's a, the woman and her appearance, while her appearance is quite literally dubbed, as in films that are dubbed with a voiceover. Uh, they're quite literally dubbed uh, by people who justify and normalize sexual violence and practice victim blaming by saying, okay, she has her own subject, but the other subject, her appearance, says something different. And the only thing that it can say when it's dubbed by people who normalize sexual violence is desiring sexual attention. So I uh, research, my research is two-way, uh, is two-way street kind of. Uh, I did research about the reception of images from the slot walk in Israel, as is a, it's a small country, so we have four slot walks here and uh, they, they became quite mainstream in the kind of a feminist peak event uh, in the country. Uh, but still, they are very scandalized in the media. And so I did research the reception on Facebook and also um, the, the um, visual tactics themselves that the protesters use. And that's what I'm going to go into. Um, so what I found was, quite interestingly, that... One would one would accept that uh, expect sorry that uh, with a name as a slot walk and the provocative attitude to protest um, most of the messages the visual messages would be sex positive right sex is not uh, sexual activity that does not diminish me as a person so a slut is not a curse word anymore but surprisingly I did find that most of the participants. Uh, decided to perform an, uh, their subjectivity on their body. So instead of uh, talking about how sexuality is positive and great, what they did was kind of unite those two subjects that Annie Hill described in her article. So I'm going to share uh, the screen now and show you some examples of visual tactics that I found. Here we go. Does that work? Okay. Uh, so first of all, that's me right here with the green hair. Next, um, a bit photos just so you see how the um, body inscriptions are being used all over 
uh, that's from South uh, America, I think in Brazil. Uh, the body inscription are used quite, quite um, widely in this protest. And that's the category. So first of all, inscribing the subject upon the body by body ins uh, inscription happens both in the event itself and in uh, preceding campaigns. I did want to add before I, uh, before I continue that I um, used a lot of feminist theories uh, that are based on Foucault and on the panopticon um, model that kind of constitutes power relations on the economy of gazes in a given society, mostly Western, modern, and contemporary societies. Um, that the fact of me being watched will, is, is enough for me to police myself. And somehow this two subjects that are divided are uh, kind of in our heads, in my head anyway, uh, when I do always have to make sure that this appearance, that other subject is not mistaken to be that of a slut. Um, to live in the public sphere uh, safely. So uh, what happens in this protest is especially interesting because of this uh, uniting of two subjects. So uh, this protester um, wrote on herself, I'm Lilo, I'm a single mother, I'm 29 years old and I was raped in 11. She has the, her own personal story embodied in her body. It cannot be divided anymore. So even if the head is cut out of the picture, the story and the subject of the woman is still there. Another example is this girl on the right. Uh, she wrote basically what a rapist told her um, bef after the attack. I came inside, take a morning after pill. So this kind of emphasizes the tragedy that happened to the woman and it makes it more hard, no matter what she, wear and she wears and how much it is ex exposed, it makes her um, be less objectifiable, if you will. Another way um, to, um, to write your subject upon the body is directly address the viewer. Uh, this participant chose to uh, this posture of um, dancing on a pole that aims to kind of um, shake off this reputation of being um, patriarchally sexualized. And she wrote not asking for it on her leg while being in that pose, meaning even if she's in the most, you know, a visually patriarchal associated um, image, she is still not asking for sexual violence, and she is still the only one who speaks, and the only subject who uh, is being hurt, hurt and should be hurt. Uh, another address the, that I wanted to add here was of this participant. She's a very, um, she's participating in most slut walks, and every time she writes, not her fetish on her stomach. She's a trans woman. And this is how she kind of counters the gaze that is directed to trans women that is kind of re-feminizing them as a fetish. So she is like part of those uh, power cultures. She is, uh, sorry, the power um, relations. And the, the response to uh, women with such, one, one would say deviating uh, appearance would be resexualizing her uh, into another small fetishized um, category in society. So not your fetish kind of counteracts exactly that uh, specific gaze uh, pointed towards trans women. Um, shocking, shocking is another technique that uh, takes place in the slot walk. She wrote attraction on, on her chest and uh, down there, uh, down the, on her legs, it's, uh, it says fuckable in two words. Uh, shocking is a technique that is used by activists um, a lot. Some local examples would be anti-deportation um, anti activists who uh, created this uh, say, like um, slave sale uh, in front of our parliament uh, in order to protest their deportation. More are um, fa um, animal rights activists who apply uh, voluntarily those uh, terrible things that happen to animals in the in the animal industry and in the meat and dairy industry on themselves to show how terrible and shock the viewer to see how terrible um, animals are treated. Another technique is mocking offensive names. One would say that uh, one would call it um, reclaiming those offensive names but I think it's really mocking because women who participate in the slot walk when witch is written on her chest or feminist terror on her arm, 
kind of uh, there a lot of uh, women also write feminazi um, so when you walk in a march that is guarded by the police it, it's not this uncontrollable riot but a march with a beginning and an end and you describe yourself as feminist terror is kind of diminishing whoever uses those terms against feminists um, yes it, it is quite terror to march down the street and and chant rhyming chants so um, this basically is I think making fun of uh, sexists making fun of people who criticize the movement another technique and that is uh, uh, I have to say this is the only example that I found um, basically reclaiming sexuality as positive decoding this um, this um, sexist manner to uh, slut shame and uh, diminish value of women and, and as human beings uh, because of sexual activity so this girl says uh, wrote on her stomach not a slut stud it sounds better in English I have to say it but um, she basically said wrote the word slut and she said I'm not a slut I'm 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 becoming better with every sexual interaction so this is the only um, the only example I found for um, reclaiming the sexuality, which is quite surprising when you think about it. Uh, another technique is uh, addressing women. Uh, writing on the body um, is uh, things like you are not alone when it's feminine, uh, in its feminine form, uh, means kind of uh, taking, like using your body, your sexual, uh, coded as sexual body, as a trap to get the message across for other women who are not participating maybe they're in the media they're, maybe they're exposed on Facebook to those messages but this uh, empowering method is um, is used a lot uh, also uh, this woman right here I believe you both in feminine terms both I and you uh, kind of creates this um, just uses the body the, the, the coding of the body as sexual um, as a trap to get messages across uh, do I have a little bit more time because there are those um, a little bit points about how it all transfers into Facebook yeah I think five minutes more is no problem perfect so I am going to stop sharing right now here we go um, right so while it goes on Facebook we see that um, well, the Facebook feed and the research, and also um, in um, also other social media um, platforms, are a lot of times compared to uh, the city square, right? The public sphere, uh, uh, the urban public sphere. You know, the Roman forums are transferred into online forums, uh, etc. And the research is trying to map out the forces and dynamics each platform allows for political uh, possibilities and uh, actions and that happens even with the cognitive bias the cognitive bias is this uh, uh, cognitive uh, shift that um, m makes us prefer and remember and look for information that suits our prior beliefs so the cognitive bias on social media and on Facebook specifically is kind of taking out of our cognition and is now in this external algorithm uh, that chooses customized content for us um, and even with this there is uh, an interesting effect of the slot walk when it translates into social media when it takes place mostly in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem as the largest cities the social media is overflown with pictures videos stories um, albums uh, of pictures and the feed just pictures as, as such without albums the participants um, post their own news channels Facebook pages post their own uh, some post into the event page some post in their uh, profile some make it a profile picture some um, some post the videos in a story or in a video in the feed so there's a lot of chaotic it's a it's a chaotic but it's overflowing uh, the social media and most humans on those pictures are not tagged methodologically so it kind of becomes women are kind of becoming anonymous um, within this crowd and within this uh, within the crowd and within the social media framing and if you add if you take a, a, a smartphone and you add this scrolling effect to watch those uh, pictures it kind of uh, resembles the, the, the March movement 
uh, as it goes through my feed. And the more I scroll, the more I see. And it kind of passes through my phone in the same manner. But this time, when it's under the viewer's smartphone, it's uh, completely under his control uh, in comparison to the public sphere, uh, the material public sphere, uh, the street. Uh, people usually stop and see the march go in front of them, but here they're in control. They can magnetize the picture, they can zoom in, they can cut out pieces, they can cut out the, the faces, they can blur the image or intervene uh, with the message uh, written on their bodies, etc. So it does become, from this embodied protest technique, it does become a visual, it does become um, an image which is less in control of the women and more in control of the viewer. Um, but what I did want to uh, finish on is that when the slot walk has a lot of interest to show a lot of pictures of the masses that come in. Um, because people will, will uh, join a movement that they deem successful. So those masses, those pictures of the masses of the hundreds and thousands uh, in the last couple of years of uh, women and men coming to protest against sexual violence, victim blaming, and rape culture, the, this message cannot be intervened at all uh, because, you know, the, the number, the, this technique of showing the number we are right because we are a lot uh, is something that is not as easily intervened as specific images and messages upon bodies. Um, so that's my article and that's my chapter and I have to say it's a bit uh, strange to talk about scandals without the taste of smoked beer uh, all around. So thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, the smoked beer. <laughs> uh, probably the others will um, experience it. It's a Franconian um, traditional beer and very, very interesting. So thank you for your presentation. I, I have a question uh, concerning the, the strategy of the protesters. Of course, they they were aim aiming at social network sites, uh, at the social web. We all know that there are filters in Facebook and the Facebook network. Uh, were there any problems um, because a lot of naked bodies and such stuff? Yeah. How did they deal with that? So most of women, as you probably saw in the pictures, most of the women are not um, showing nipples and not showing um, sexual organs at all. Um, so they do pass pretty well on, on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I can't say that in the last uh, year or two uh, there were more uh, topless protests uh, regarding different things, uh, feminist issues and even like completely uh, social issues. And I can see that Facebook specifically and the Israeli media kind of letting the nipples be um, on on the big uh, news channels and uh, online as well. Um, and some activists actually use this kind of, um, this kind of uh, privilege now. They have this kind of loophole um, while like, for example, a lot of protests are happening now against our prime minister. And uh, there were a couple of activists who came to protest police uh, brutality there. And they decided to write on signs um, boobs are being photo like look better than and then write police brutality right here so in order to the sentence to be whole they needed to show this part as well and um i think it's uh it's something that goes uh through a process right now i think uh the nipple is kind of being um bottom down uh, bottom up sorry um freed step by step it is still the holy land and it still is very religious in uh in the the status quo but uh i do think uh specifically the slot walk passes pretty pretty easily um okay okay good we have a question or remark by mia maria yes yes uh thank you and it was really interesting listening to you um uh, so I, I think that social movements and, and uh, activism research in general has one clear advantage compared to other fields, uh, and that is that you usually uh, gather a really interesting material through rich ethnography. It's fantastic to see. 
and it's so important, I think. Um, and my question might be a bit traditional, <laughs> but uh, how does how does this field of yours uh, relate to scandals or media scandals more specifically? Is it is it scandal audiences reactions that we watch or um, yeah? So it's the interconnection here between uh, uh, scandalogy, scandals in new media environments that I would be interesting to hear you uh, explain. Yeah. Uh, so, um, the slot walk movement in Israel uh, is quite strong, it's more strong than other countries, and as such, it, it is, const it, it constructs, a, it becomes a scandal almost annually um, here in Israel in the media. And what triggered me specifically, and that's uh, what I did not go into uh, in this uh, lecture, was uh, this one opinion leader. He's uh, his name is The Shadow, he, that's how he calls himself. He was a rapper and then he became a right-wing activist and uh, um, he posted on his Facebook page um, two posts criticizing the slut walk and that started an outrage of a lot of uh, right-wing kind of uh, the conservative camps, camp uh, who follows him started like that was that created for the first time a platform for really um you know criticizing harshly with with curse and violence and um a lot of those uh, raw cultural uh, perception expressions um to the slot walk and i felt that um he, he posted one post and then the jerusalem slot walk answered and then he posted another post and the whole exchange was um covered uh in the media and it just brought a lot of lo a lot more participants uh, to both slut walks in Tel Aviv and in Jerusalem, and I think that that what became a scandal because uh, the social media um, discussions are honestly are outraged, um, and politicians like and elected officials are still not responding to this movement uh they kind of ignore it to not give it any power but this still became where the social media uh the social media sphere does uh has have this um the space to negotiate those things and somehow it feels that women are getting naked as you saw there were no nipples and no uh vaginas but uh the, this getting naked uh, notion is still very, very triggering in this cultural um, atmosphere of uh, religiousness, of uh, being holy to three monotheistic religions and um, disgracing the land, disgracing our nation, disgracing uh, our gender. And uh, the, the discussion is very heated to the point of um, threats, violence, um, a lot of me media coverage as well. Thank you.